okay, this is a bit of education on looking at travel and how charts sort of, when we look back as astrologers, we're able to see patterns and symbols and the houses, the planets were in and all sorts of things in order to understand exactly what was going on at any given time. So you can see this chart here, and this is dated the 11th of September, 2001. And what I want to do is point out some things that um, will be relevant to today's chart and also the chart of the 12th of January, 2020. Okay, so what we have is that we're gonna look at this chart and the first thing I'm gonna point out and um, which is important is that the North Node on 11th of September 2001 was at two degrees Cancer and it would then be going because the nodes move retrograde around the chart the node would have been going from two degrees into Gemini and we would have you know seen that happen within a few you know maybe less than a month of that two degrees. So if we look over here, if you can see my pointer, and we look at the node, it's 215 degrees of Cancer. And this is what that node, sort of a node in Cancer means. So the North Node in Cancer brings conflict between family and profession, home and public, proximity and distance, inner experience and external obligations. So it's about the need to find happiness in our families and spiritual life. And it's been interested in the roots and the nation and the homeland that we, you know, that we're in. And also it's about our feelings and our emotional needs. And it can indicate exaggerated ambition and external recognition instead of developing inner peace. So we're supposed to be developing inner peace when that moves through the sign of cancer and it would have started at 30 degrees and gone back to you know zero and then it moved into the sign of cancer i'm sorry the, the sign of gemini so then what we're going to look at next is pluto so if you observe up here pluto at the time was in sagittarius pluto takes 240 years to go around a chart and it takes between 14 to 20 years in a sign because we have retrograde periods as well. So it varies from sign to sign. And then on top of that, um, so let's look at Pluto and Sagittarius, what it means. So Pluto and Sagittarius, it's about understanding and it's about being philosophical. It's about personal transformation or the collective transformation and through physical, logical, philosophical, sorry, searching. Pluto in this position, it strengthens, you know, what's innate in us. It's the religious consciousness and feeling. It's about, you know, higher intuition. We can, ex and it's also about expecting um, new mystical or spiritual direction. And it's about merging existing religions and churches. So it's merging us all together, so, which is very interesting that Pluto was in Sagittarius at 12 degrees. So then if you look opposite that, and this is where it gets interesting, that we have an opposition to Saturn in Gemini. So we're now gonna look at what Saturn in Gemini means at that point. So Saturn in Gemini, it was about learning to use the mind correctly and effectively. And it's about intelligence and literally, you know, it's about written, as well what's written and um, everything to do having a logical explanation and it's about intuition as well and it's also limited by our inability to think logically it's where we can be hypersensitive mentally and we can have difficulties coping with obstacles and challenges but also Nevertheless, it's duality and that persists in this sign um, when, you know, the Gemini. And also it's about change occurring. It's from the other or change into the other. So it's about where change occurs at a deep level. So then what we had, let's go a bit deeper. We've got 
Pluto also, I would add, it's very important to understand what Pluto means in a chart, that Pluto is the planet of death and rebirth. It's about the end of things and it's about judgment day. It's about our obsessions and convictions. It can be, you know, to do with birth, death and regeneration and transformation and metamorphosis. And it can destroy things, but it also brings with it healing and transformation. So we, you know, that's what Pluto means for all of us in our own chart and also in the chart of the collective. So wherever Pluto is matters, um, you know, really matters in evolutionary astrology. That's what we look at Pluto and the North Node and the South Node. So the next thing we have is that, let's see. The next thing we have is, I'm just looking here, we're going to look at Chiron. That's what we're going to do. Um, Chiron is here, it's at 23 degrees. So we had Pluto, Chiron, Mars, and also the south node would have been just at, um, let's see there, is it Capricorn? No, yes, it would have been Capricorn moving into Sagittarius. Okay, because the nodes go that way around the chart clockwise. So let's look at Chiron. Chiron is about um, forced experience. Chiron in Sagittarius, rather, is about forced experience of religious ideology, crisis and doubts, and, you know, about the meaning of life. It's doubts about the meaning of life. The world may seem full of crazy people where no rules apply, and it can be fine to hard it can be hard to find a meaningful place in when Chiron is in Sagittarius. And it's about trusting the, our native outlanders. It's about foreigners in our own country. And it's also where others may seem invulnerable. And this is also, you know, it's to do with injury, though it's to do with our wounding in the world as well. So that's fascinating that on the 11th of September, 2011, that's where these planets were. Mars would have been, let's check here, Mars would have been at in Capricorn at one degree. So we got that there, Capricorn, Mars, and it was one degree Capricorn because the planets move that way around the chart. Okay. That's right. And the nodes move that way. So just getting that right. So with the Mars, um, that would have just left Sagittarius and moved into Capricorn. And the node would then be going this way. Okay. So if we look then, let's see what else we got here. The North Node, the Jupiter would have been in Cancer as well. So let's look at Jupiter. Jupiter's in Cancer down here. And Jupiter in Cancer is about the most basic law of nature. It's knowing that where you know when we have that in our chart if we have that it's where things knowing that things thrive when we look after them and jupiter in cancer is a very strong influence it's about our emotional nature and it's very broad and it's very deep and it can be where we're trying to please everybody and it's where we're hypersensitive or too sentimental or too kind and also we can run away people can run away or gather around people who've got jupiter in cancer as well there can be excessive care and also a compensation for lack of emotional understanding and care from mother or family. So we can say mother, you know, the collective, um, when we look at mother as well, it's not just um, our own personal mother earth as well. So the last thing I'm going to look at here is the North Node which is going to be moving into Gemini, but I'm going to look at another chart. So I want you to observe this chart, that the main thing that I'm looking at here is that we've basically got that North Node moving into Gemini, okay, at that point. So then if we go to the chart of the 12th of January 2020, we can see that astrologers knew that we were going to have a breakdown of structure. And the reason we knew this is because we had a stellium of planets in Capricorn and Capricorn is to do with our, you know, image in the world and also work. And it's to do with father, like patriarchy. And the ruler of Saturn is, the ruler of Capricorn is Saturn. And Saturn is to do with, you know, our rules and our boundaries. And again, father, patriarchy, time, karma, 
there's so much um it's very rich you know in meaning astrology and each archetype and each planet and each house all define is very defining so at this point we had the sun was in capricorn at 22 degrees we had pluto in capricorn saturn in capricorn and we had Mercury at 23 degrees in Capricorn. We also had Jupiter at nine degrees in Capricorn and the South Node at seven degrees in Capricorn, which would be moving into Sagittarius. And this is January 2020. And then we've got the, the North Node, that South Node, North Node, move, it would have been moving into Cancer. So now look at this, okay? So this stellium showed us that we were gonna have a breakdown of structure. So Pluto, birth, death, transformation, Saturn, rules, regulations, laws, you know, um, karma. The sun is like our will, it's where we shine. That Jupiter is to do with um, expansion, it's to do with travel overseas and um, religious and you know, the church and all sorts of things, spirituality. So there's a lot going on here that we could get into, but I'm not going to go deeply into this. I'm just going to explain that astrologers understood this. If you, if you look at any videos, you know, look at the Pluto-Saturn conjunction, it spells it out to you. So then we're going to look at the chart of today. And what we can see is that if you look, you can see that the South Node is about to move into Sagittarius and the North Node is about to move into Gemini. So that was my point. So look at this chart. And then if we go here, we've got the same thing going on 18 years ago, 18 and a half years ago. So we've got the node would be moving into Sagittarius and the north node moving into Gemini. So what does that mean? This is today's chart now. What's going on? So the north node in Gemini, it brings conflict between seeking objectivity and lively communication on one hand and clinging to a highly subjective understanding. It's where we're firmly anchored in our opinions and commands on the other. And it's where we learn how to express complex contexts and ideas in everyday language and how to convey spiritual thinking into practical life. And it's also where we transfer it in comprehensible form and show clearly the connection between the philosophical and the noble knowledge and values of everyday life. And it's where we need to be aware of prejudices and stubborn beliefs. So this gets interesting because the node um, is about to move into Gemini. Now, the point is, is that when I showed you that 9-11 chart, travel at that time was completely restricted. Um, you know, when 9-11 happened, there were new rules and regulations that came in. So up here, we've got Pluto. Let's go back to the 12th of January. We had... Pluto conjunct Saturn. So in the 9-11 chart, we have Pluto in opposition to Saturn. So we've got a similar theme going on and also with the nodes moving. So as astrologers, we're able to look back at the configuration of a chart and understand what's going on now. So we can clearly see that as this node is about to move into Sagittarius, the south node, and the north node into Gemini, if I push this chart forward, let's go by one week to the, let's go back, we're going to go forward one week, sorry, to the 11th of May, which is a week away, no, the 11th of May is, no, this is today, let's go, I'm going one day forward, 11th of May, we're going days forward, 12th of May, look, look at this node here, now we're going to jump ahead a week, and this is AstroSeq, by the way, you can get your own chart here. So you can see that on the 19th of May, we're going to have a zero degrees in Gemini, that node. And we can see clearly that all of the travel is going to be restricted. This is what's happening. It's very real. And that node stays in a sign for the 30 degrees for a year and a half. And the south node will move into Sagittarius, which is travel restriction and it's changing belief systems to do with um, the religious dogma maybe and you know not all religion is dogma but it's partly to do with the religious dogma and we'll be looking at that and we'll be looking at what we believe in our belief systems and we'll be moving into short travels and community and communicating with each other 
So that's really all I wanted to show you today. So hopefully you've got something from that and you can see what I was speaking about there. If you've got any questions, you can comment below. And if you want a chart reading, then you can book with me. You can see my link below as well. Thanks for watching this. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. That would be really great. Catch you later. Thanks.